Hey, day three. Let's organize quite a long work session for today. I believe the last thing we'd worked on is the scatter and setup. It should be our main tool in order to scatter the vegetation into our scene. We should really address the terrain and vegetation now, so we can start closing things up. So that is what we are going to do now as a starting point. And later we will see where we are heading. Let's open the folder. What should we use to begin with? For example, let's try this one. Low and medium settings. And these purple things appear. I suppose that they are some kind of a placer holder for the viewport. How do I change the damn view? <laughs> this is the button. So if I switch to render view, how does it look actually? Okay that's not bad at all. And it does a good blending with the ground texture. So right now we are using the 3k texture. The texture scale is too big. I think we can make it a bit smaller. I think that is an upgrade. Everything is much better scattered. So, my question is, how can I create a wave map in order to scatter the vegetation where I want? Okay, so now they should start appearing. I think we'd subdivided the terrain a bit too much. But anyways, if the camera is located aiming in this direction, we should scatter the vegetation around here. Okay so this is the weight map for just one layer, should be our basic grass. It should remain as something like this, quite short. We should avoid hiding the frogs with the vegetation, in relation to them. This should be the maximum size. You oh 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 shit, I can't believe it. Wind, you can animate the wind effect. I'm afraid of turning up the scatter density number too much. I would prefer to avoid burning my poor computer down to be honest. We should optimize this. Let's select the camera to show just what gets in frame. Let's see how this is looking. The sure area especially looks quite poor. We will definitely need to scatter more vegetation there. I think I'm going to create a new layer just for that area. The back part is looking filler. How long would it take to render right now? With the current settings. Well samples are running quite well. For the moment it isn't as bad as I was guessing. Let's keep the optimization in mind though. We are going to scatter another layer. Let's try some different plant variation now. This one is perfect to add a little bit of more complexity to the scene. Oh, they are taller than I thought. That's fine. They fit nicely into the scene. Let's scatter them at the back part of the composition. They will act as a perimeter of some sort. Look at that. I'm liking this distribution. Okay, so see. That background part is all going to be blurred by the tilt shift effect, as well as the closer bottom part. That macro effect will also help us sell the proportion and scale of the scene. Okay so let's go for another layer. I think this time we will go for this one. We are going to scatter the middle part, and also the shore. For the moment the viewport is also not suffering any delay or lag whatsoever. That is nice. Look. We are slowly getting there. Okay I'm going to do two more layers. One to add more vegetation variety and density around here. And another one near the shore, so the transition to the terrain texture is smooth. Those actually look very nice. I will scatter them around here randomly. They are quite tall. I thought they were a lot shorter and smaller in general. But no problem at all. I was thinking of doing another layer, but I'm quite scared that it is going to be too much to handle. I'm slowly turning into a crazy gardener. I'm worried about the render performance. I want exactly something like this. Focus that type of moss just in the shore part in order to hide the background. That is the best option that we have. I like what is going on there, that transition. Looking at this, I think that we should add even more variation in the middle section part. This is where most of the vegetation is shown to the camera. We need to focus there. Also I'm not convinced about the water shader. It's a little bit too muddy. We will tweak it a bit later. Also what would help a lot is to scatter some flowers here and there. I'm seeing too much green. We need a pop of color that breaks it. I was thinking about some dandelions or something like that. Alright I'm going to try this blender file out. Shout out to the user theorines. Let's check it out, and see if it fits the style of the scene. Okay I, I they look quite fine. Not bad at all man. Honestly. And now here, in our wonderful scene. Let's paste the dandelions here, with all of them selected. Let's press F3 and type create collection. We are going to call the collection dandelion. And now instead of using the scatter addon, we will have to do it like the peasants. Creating a particle setting manually. Let's click in here. Alright. Here in viewport. Render. Let's click in the collection tab. And select dandelion. And there are our wonderful little flowers. Now in the rotation tab let's make them stand straight. All this rotation setting is always a pain in the ass for me. And here in vortex groups. Select density. We are going to set up a new group for scattering them. 
Now in the vertex group tab, right here. Add a new one, and paint the weight map where we want to make them grow. The good thing is, that this type of flower basically spawns everywhere, so let's scatter them around the place. Now here in the density tab let's, set the weight map, that we've just painted, so we can manually control the place where they grow. And now we can see that there are too many of them. We need to reduce. Let's try a hundred, and see if it's too much or enough. For the moment they are too big. Let's add randomness to their scale. And then downsize them. Alright, it's starting to look the way we need. Finally let's click in the rotation tab, and proceed to randomize their rotation. Something like that is enough. If they stick to the same rotation it looks too artificial. Ok now let's toggle everything on again. And for the love of god please keep saving the file. Let's see if that pop of color pays off. Alright man. Ok. It's looking nice over there. A smart thing to do, is actually setting the same moss that we used on the shore area, on the small island, where the frog is standing. It will look better that way. We are going to create another layer, and since this is completely on focus, we might set a better detail to them. Just keep painting. I think I also might add some rocks, in order to hide the transition from the island to the water. Right now it looks a bit facky, like there isn't any transition at all. Let's continue with the plan. I'm going to distribute the small frogs in a circle. That way we can start closing the vegetation part, and make sure that we don't overplant too much. The fact that the moss is covering their feet is very convenient. It really covers a bunch of imperfections with the animation in relation to the ground. Such as the feet hovering in the air, or intersecting with the mesh. It's a simple way of troubleshooting all of those details at once, and save a lot of time. Now I'm going to set the camera to get that tilt shift effect that we were talking about. How many millimeters does the lens have? 89. That's already a macro isn't it? I'm going to add an empty just in the center. Here is where the camera should focus. Let's name our empty here to have it under control and leave the composition of the takes for later. The water shader looks very muddy, too much of a swamp. Also let's tweak the bump, it will add a bit of contrast to the water, it should reflect a bit more its surroundings. Also what fits a lot the scene is adding some water lilies. I'm going to add an image from the top like this one. Let's use a method from the William guy. Let's add a circle. And then click here to generate a grid. There it is. We will add a subsurface, and delete some of the edges. Then move the vertex, in order to create the shape of a water lily. Something like that. We can add a solidify modifier, to make them a bit thick. Then let's duplicate it to have different variations. And then create a new material, and call it Nenfa. In the shader editor let's add an image texture, and search for our water lily texture. Then UV project from the top view, and rotate and adapt the shape in the UV editor. Alright so there is one finished. Now we only need to duplicate, and select other parts of the image to create different textures. That is actually looking pretty nice to be honest. With everything activated let's see. There are quite some things to tweak. Let's organize a bit by listing things to do. The most important right now is to change that transition between the water and the island, using the vegetation to smooth it out. Also the shore needs some love. Also we should rig the toad and position his leg on top of the dragonfly. Also reposition the insect being stepped to be more visible to the camera. Let me check, if the wings are visible right now, they look too subtle. We should change the shader to make it pop. Let's add a mix shader, and combine it to create a reflection. As you see there are a lot of details that need to be fixed. Not only the element need to look good on their own, but also in combination with everything enabled in the scene. The way that moss is scattered there is driving me nuts. It's literally hovering over the mesh. Look, let's add some rocks surrounding the island shore, and call it a day. With that we also are going to solve all those problems mentioned. Let's go to a website called Quixel Megaskin. It's like going to the mall. There is absolutely everything in there. Everything and more. Assets, decals, models, textures, carizo. Careful there with that tree trunk. Could really fit the background part of the compo. Look at that. Free things Jesus Christ. Careful. Oh man that looks nice. Okay we are going 4k here. It will be more than enough. So here is the rocks file. And here our beloved tree trunk. Let's export this in our project folder. We are going to import the FBX model straight away. Shift Ctrl T to add the textures. Since there is just one model, we are going to modify and twist them so they don't look the same. That will do. And now let's fortify around the island by duplicating the model like a madman. If I add a decimate do the textures and the UV go to shit? Let's set it around here. They seem to stay. Good. 
Let's try and place them, and avoid repeated positions. I'm going to place one next to each other, and tweak the scale, rotation and so, like that. That looks about right. Okay there are some holes here and there, but it looks far better already. Let's add the last details. We are going to spawn individual plants and place them manually to have better control, and just fill the holes like that. We should do a render test now with everything enabled. Let's see how it handles the scene. What I'm mostly afraid of is the initial load of information before each render. All the material and object synchronization is blowing up the time. Damn. Look at that. Like 25 seconds just to load the cache and kernels. I think I will go for the maximum quality. Just to flex. Let's go with 4k cannon. Subdivide this more for the love of god. Okay 4k easy. A whole minute for a frame. And the resolution isn't even halfway there. Gs. I'm worried now. Especially for that initial synchronization. It's too damn long man. Here in Orphan Data let's try to delete all that data and materials that are unused. Let's try and purge it, and make the blender file a bit lighter. Okay since it's our main element, we are going to focus now on the toad. I'm thinking in an armature to rip him. Then we will be able to change his position, and also make him look alive. Now he is completely stiff. Let's create the same rig as we did for the little frogs. Let's parent everything and see if it works. What? What is going on? Nothing is moving. It seems that the automating weights aren't applied. By doing some research I found this dude's video. Shout out to Isa. The error that we are getting here I thought only happened with simulations. But it seems that it is related to any calculation. Blender basically struggles a lot when it has to perform calculations attached to something small. Since the toad is quite small with only 20 centimeters. We are going to select the mesh and the armature. Press S and upscale them by 10. Now if we do the parenting again there shouldn't be any error going on. Now everything works as it should. So let's downscale our guy again to the original size. And now move him to his final position. Moving the arm bones. To create contact with the ground. And the left one stepped on the dragonfly. This is looking pretty cool. Now using some magic shape keys. We can select the mesh in his chest area. And let's try to make him breathe. Wait. How does a toad breathe? There it is. That's what I want. When the jowl moves also the back retracts. It's very fast actually, but has to be subtle. Let's animate with key points in the shape keys. We should create an animation cycle, like that yup. Ooh a key, render keeps looking fine. I think I will end up placing that tree trunk in the background. Let's download the 2k version instead of the 4k. Since it will be in the background out of focus. Doesn't change that much. Let's import it, and set the principal texture. We can decimate it to erase some polygons. Back there nobody will notice. And lastly animate the water lilies. As easy as adding a rotation key point. And here in the graph editor select a noise modifier. Hello there, day 4. Yesterday we did quite some work. In today's session I want to start actually finishing things up. Closing all the details leaving it ready to render. There isn't any fooling around in today's session. Last thing we did, was animating the breathing cycle. And also the water lily rotation. Now we are going to upgrade the toad's breathing animation cycle. We will also add the chest movement. That looks wonderful. What else? The time has come. Let's do the light now. I used to have an addon. Let me remember the name. Govus is cold. It includes a bunch of stencils for still and animated shadows. It's very convenient. It's actually crazy how much can improve a scene. I bought it some time ago. Okay here it is. Actually it is more like an asset than an addon. Once extracted you need to link the path of the Govus folder here in file paths. Then it is kind of installed. Now if we go to asset browser here, there should appear the linked folder with all the asset content. Here they are, there are a bunch. Let's try one out. Delete the old one for the moment and try this one for example. Animated leaves make it a little bit smaller, how it looks now. Jesus fucking Christ and his mother. It looks crazy already. God damn, it really adds a lot of detail and depth to the scene. 
Ok let's open a brand new blender file. And recreate the scene with basic meshes. Ok this is how it looks. Damn. Imagine that the cube is the frog. I think it is going to be too windy. I've selected the number 11. It moves too much but also is the one that looks the best for our scene. Ok this one is far more chill. And it can fit nicely. Then let's swap the number 11 for the new number 12 and see. It's better like that. Far more subtle. So the center part gets fully illuminated. The wind motion has the perfect speed. Too much would be very confusing and stressful. It has to be calm. Keeping with the animation. Let's focus on the wings. The same thing. Add a rotation key point. And we are going to try and replicate that quick movement when a flying insect gets killed. It's quite fast and cartoonish. Like that. Now let's do a cycle. Perfect. The loop is done. And now the lily should have some movement too. To be honest I'm quite lazy right now to replicate that organic look that our flower reference has. I think I might leave it as it is. Add some modifiers and rotation, and call it a day. Also it will save us a lot of time. Tweaking a wave modifier might do the trick. Ctrl L to copy the same modifier configuration to the other segments. Everything behaves the same. And now the same trick that we've been using. Set a rotation key point, and then a noise modifier in the graph editor. Let's tweak it a bit. Trying to create a very subtle swing effect. Also let's do the same for this plant at the front. Slowly making the scene come to life. Actually it's the little details like those that stack up and end up building a scene. Then the water. Let's animate a bit of movement on the surface. We are going to tweak the bump noise. It's a very easy tweak to animate water. Add a keyframe and move to the final frame to add another one. Has to be really subtle. Since it's upon the movement needs to be really minimal. Okay let's keep closing things up. These rocks lack a bit of detail. The transition from the rock surface to the water is too fake. Like it was clipping. Some cyberpunk shit going on. We are going to do an easy trick there. Anything complicated. Let's select the mesh near the contact area. Duplicate the rock material. And assign the new one to the selected mesh. Now let's turn the roughness down. And also change the hue color to make it look darker. That will create a wet effect. It isn't the wittiest solution out there. But for our context it's enough. And now let's do the same for the other rocks. Animation wise. The water lilies checked. Water checked. Dancing frogs also checked. Wings too. Let's also try to move our toad's head a bit. We can try to add a noise too by selecting the head bone. Alright it's moving. I like the animatronic vibe. Amphibians are weird as fuck man. I'm very curious about adding wind movement to the plants. Let's try it out with the taller ones and see. Here is the modifier. Mother of god, it's super easy. Okay our frame rate is going to shit. We will disable it for the moment and add the wind. Just before entering the final scene. For the moment the final motion will have two different shots. One from the back. Like it was someone taking a look from the tree. Handled camera peeking through the corner. And the other one this general shot from here. Maybe later we can add another one. Some details shot from the top part. Or very near the ground. Let's add a brand new camera to the scene. Activate it as our main one. And use WASD to fly to our position. The idea is to recreate a peaking animation like this. Some counter strike moves. Let's see which angle fits the best. Also because there are some parts that are empty over there. We can upscale the lens to a telescope. So the shot is a bit more narrow and closed. Here set the focus object to the empty that we've been using. Let's start setting up the key points to build our motion. Another one here. And see the movement and speed. It has to be much slower. Like the camera is peeking. Wondering what's there. More like that. Also let's add a noise. To create that handheld movement. And apply it to the X and Y axis. We can try to create some sort of a focus zoom. Here set the lens at 55 or so. And around here set it at 85. Something like that. We will make the camera hold position while zooming. And then move it like the dude was crawling to get another angle shot. Something like that. For the moment this is one shot. See that background part that is completely empty of vegetation. Instead of scattering more plant models. Adding more memory load to our scene. We are going to use a PNG image like a chat. Something like that will do the trick. And now let's import the image. And cover the background area to fill the gaps. Most important is to cover the ground. And then just build up faking some forest depth. Okay that left part looks nice. We will add some more to the right one, but it's good already. And now to our main shot. Of course let's tweak our beloved noise modifier, to add that handheld effect. And also just a bit to our y axis. 
Alright for today, it's enough dude, I'm going to be away for a few days that will slow the project down, so in a week or so I might be able to be around here again, I will need to refresh a bunch of things in order to do the final renders, but today I tried my best to leave it as finished as I could, we will see. So nothing much to say, see you in a week and we will finish the whole woke throg, do the post processing composition and edit the final video, so anything else. I'm going to play some Diablo and fuck off. Have a good one. Hey, let's continue shall we? I'd said that I was going to be away for a week or so. Well, it's been a month, so I really need to refresh my memory a bit in order to proceed. Few new things. I've changed my mind about the video's main idea. The end short is going to be like a nature documentary, also mainly gathering inspiration from the legendary narrator Sir David Attenborough. With that the idea is to replicate those types of still shots, much more focused than what we had previously done. Far less movement, focusing into the details, and blurring the background quite some more, and then use his legendary voice to narrate our own scene. So in order to create those still shots we will need to modify the ones that we did in the previous session. We are going to remove a lot of noise from the modifier, and erase most of the hand build effect. We need them to be far more subtle. The animation that we did for the back shot specially needs quite some rework. The whole notion doesn't fit the mood of a documentary at all. We will make it more subtle. I'm thinking of removing all those end frames, and just keep the first part. Then as I've said, Sir David Attenborough will be our personal narrator. This is a trial script. He is going to narrate our whole scene as an actual documentary, recreating the same rhythm as his shows and similar look and feel. I hope we can get something convincing. So about David's voice, we are going to use this website called Faked You. It's an AI based software that has over 2000 voices in it. Here there is. Let's try it out. Just copying a phrase from our own custom script and paste it right here. It should generate and replicate the same sentence. Usually the outcome has a bit of a grainy voice, a robotic feel to it. In our case it works wonderfully. Mainly because David is older than a forest. By the way, is he alive? Fuck yes 96 years old. So the next step is writing the final script, so we can render out the different shots. It's going to be pretty straightforward from now on. Jesus Christ I've creamed. Alright so the script is already prepared with David's voice. The voice is quite convincing. I'm surprised by how good it came out. Now we need to arrange those sentences in order, using proper timing as a mimic of his documentaries. And then I'm going to add this guy. BBC people cream their pants when they listen a native flute, so I will arrange this melody over our documentary, starting from the beginning like... It's going to really sell the documentary vibe. Now it's just a matter of setting the different takes. All of those takes are defined by the script itself. I'm going to start composing the shots according to the audio. Once rendered we will create the short film with the takes and the audio narration. That's the plan. Now I'm going to compose all the different takes and render them one by one. I'll be back when it's ready. Yo! Hello there. It's been quite some time, so much that my beard has banished. Rendered times altogether have been around 16 to 17 hours. I've imported all of them in After Effects. Let's check them one by one. First one, a dragonfly's wings close up. Second, the dragonfly being stepped. Then the white shot, the dancing frog. This one from the back has turned out really nice. The lily flower looks really delicate, so beautiful. And finally the queen toad close up. Well so these are all the final takes. As you can see they are fresh from the bakery. They don't have any work or treatment yet. In a second we will start tweaking them. For the moment let's focus on editing the video. As you've seen I've already set in the timeline with David's voice. They are laid out taking care of the documentary timings. Behind the camera I've also placed yesterday's flute music piece. It's going to be so good. Lastly, the six different shots that I've shown are arranged on the timeline as well. Those have been rendered in PNG sequence and imported in Premiere. 
How everything is laid out is very reminiscent of those BBC documentaries. Not gonna lie, the timing and flow is pretty damn good. The voice levels are decent enough. We may need to add more sound layers. It lacks some background sound that gives atmosphere to the scene. Something like forest or pond sounds. Some wind. Insects something that sells the mood. I think that I'm going to use the sound of this documentary rather than start looking for sounds in random libraries. Between the narrator's voice we already have some nice sections of ambient sound that fit really well into our scene. I mean, it isn't the most elegant way of getting our sound, but it's just a snippet of the whole thing, not that bad. If you truly believe in it, we can extract the audio from the video, just focus and believe in the power of the scene. Told you, it's just a matter of believing. There it is. So now here in our timeline, let's drag our fresh audio file. And we have the whole documentary audio here. So let's find the snippets where there isn't any narrator voice and then just delete the rest. The transitions between the clips are too harsh. See, if we search here for audio transition and drag the constant power, it does a trick to mix both audios to get smoother transitions. For our scene it's more than enough. Alright so the video editing is going pretty good. The arrangement it's done. The most important part now and the last one is the color grading where magic happens. We aren't going to use Premiere by any means. All my home is hate Premiere. We are going to use Davinci Resolve. I have some plug in there that is going to help quite a bit. So, for exporting the Premiere timeline so we can edit each clip separately, we are going to export just the timeline as it is and use it with DaVinci Resolve. First save the project, then select all the audio arrays, and then select all the media clips here in files, export, and select Final Cut Pro XML. Name and save it. Alright then do Ctrl Z to get our full timeline back and not lose it. Here is saved the file that we are going to import. Now let's open DaVinci Resolve. Let's select an untitled project. Here in files. Hover on import and click timeline. And select our XML file. No need to do any change here. Okay. Let's start with the close up look on his face. At the bottom click fusion. Search for chromatic aberration. And drag it to the node. Let's tweak it here a bit. Here pressing shift space. And let's type glow. Tweak it a bit subtle. I'm going to download a lens dirt texture. This one looks good. We are going to drag it directly to the node. Like that. And here let's select screen. I'm sure you are thinking damn. He is too good. All lies guys. I've taken all of this from this tutorial. Shout out cinematic cookie. Let's add a lumic here. And connect it here with a glow. Add a blur next to it. Like that yup. Here we can tweak the threshold that affects how much the lens dirt gets exposed. Like this would be too much like clean the lens you dirty bastard. And finally add a color corrector here. And in the game tab accentuate the effect a bit. Alright so this fusion part is over. I will tweak it more later. But the basics are there. Now let's go to the color tab. We are going to add some serial nodes here. In the last one of those. We are going to add this plugin called film convert. Let's add it. And here there are a bunch of film presets already tweaked. So we are going to go one by one till we find the look that we are aiming for. Okay. This Fujifilm can be a good starting point. If we press the P key we can preview it full screen. Here I might take down the lows to create more contrast. Take the middles a bit up. And the highs around here. Click left and add a label called film. And then the next labels we are going to tweak more effects separately. The first one is where I'm going to crank up the saturation. I must say that I'm not a professional at this by any means. It's just my technique. Alright, we are going to make the scene a bit colder. Let's tweak the purples. I'm going to add a last serial here, and add a vignette to focus the scene. Let's try out the effect by dragging it. Okay it's looking good. For the moment this clip has enough tweaking. To copy all this color configuration quickly into another clip, left click in the viewport, and click grab still. And if we drag this still into the viewport, all the same color configuration from the other clips gets imported. For the fusion nodes it isn't that fancy, we are doing it like the fools. Select all of them and Control c and paste it into the new click and connect. Alright so behind the scenes I'm going to do the same for the rest of the clips and color correct everything. Once all of the clips are set up as we desire, I think that the feeling that I was looking for is there. Now the final step. Let's click edit. Select everything and click delivery. Now here in render settings search for Premiere XML. Right now we don't need to change any configuration here. Let's select the output folder. Click add to render queue and render. 
Once the process is finished, we have in the output folder the XML file and the clips. Here I have a previous coloring version arranged in the timeline. Control I to import and select the DaVinci rendered file. Here we have the colored timeline. Let's paste it to our video sequence. And we are going to compare between both options and see which one looks better between this two. Let's see. I'm choosing this. From those I'm sticking with this one. There isn't any doubt here. I choose this one. So with everything selected it should look alright. Okay perfect. The colors fit. And there isn't any mismatch. I'm going to turn David's voice up. Finished. That's it. There is no point in overdoing it. Control M. And now basically is to configure the render presets between quality and size. I usually go for MP4. Render at maximum depth. Encoding settings at high. As it is. And here select CBR and set it around 30 or so. Maximum quality render and that's it. Let's export our file and see the final results. Here there is. The lily toad in its natural habitat. She is the queen of the pond. It seems that she has gathered her servants. The little red frogs are her personal hunters. They feed the queen with delicious nutrients. Today's many, a young darning needle. The hunters are performing the food ritual to their queen. They look very proud of their accomplishment. She seems delighted as well. Beside her trustful soldiers, the feast is prepared to begin. Damn that is good. I like it a lot. Hey, so that's it. Project is finished. What else do you want from me? I'm quite proud of how it turned out. It's done. We are not going to make this be like 84 hours long. So that's it. Cut. It's over. Finished project. Let's go for another one. See you later. Subscribe and like. Bye.